Hey there guys, welcome back to another view with me, Ben Rogashan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Today I wanted to talk about data architects versus data engineers. And honestly, this is a question I get a lot. A lot of people want to know the difference. Um, and sometimes I have a hard time maybe answering it because for some companies, the data engineers are stuck doing data architect work. And so it's kind of this interesting place. In fact, I just talked to um, Jeff, who is a director of uh, architecture at Disney. One of the things he pointed out is that some companies just kind of have the principal data engineer or the very, very senior um, manager or something act as the data architect. So not all companies have a data architect, but it is still a very common role, especially at large enterprises. So I do want to talk about generally the differences between these two uh, terms, as well as how they work together, because they do tend to work very closely together. Now, the simplest way you can kind of understand data architects versus data engineers is it's not that different than perhaps a general architect and builders. You know, you generally have someone plan out uh, what is going to happen, how you're going, like, you know, the rules you're going to follow, what something's going to look like, high level uh, concepts, right? Like the architecture, the rules of how something will be built, the, the actual principles that you will follow for this specific project. Um, that way, but towards the end, as, as you have, you know, even if you change out builders, the end vision is still the same. And I think that's what's kind of important is at the end, you have this thing that fell, followed through. There's this example um, from the book, The Myth Called Man Month. Um, that kind of covers this, how, you know, old um, building projects that took like 50 years to build and had multiple architects or multiple people build it over that time period still manage to have that core essence of being the same project because they followed a certain set of principles and rules to build, you know, with that vision, to actually build something that looked correct, you know, that, that looked like it all fit one vision. And so that's generally the architect's goal amongst the fact that they're also trying to obviously meet all the requirements and things of that nature. So they really set the rules of engagement and then the data engineers implement it. And so that's the basic way of understanding it. But now let's talk about the specific roles and then we can go a little deeper. So. First of all, let's talk about data architects. When they are at a company, they have obviously a certain role. And as I kind of outlined it earlier, the role is that they kind of are the ones that create the architecture, the design, the rules, and everything that's basically focused around defining how things will be built. They're not the ones building, they're the ones defining how it will be built. And this is very typical whenever you hear the term architect, right? Like it's more about the vision and how things will be built. Skill wise, that means they need to be good at obviously data modeling. Um, and this is why sometimes it's interesting because a lot of data engineers have to data model at many companies, but at larger enterprises, most likely you have an architect planning out the data model, which also means they need to have a good understanding of the business. So there's, there's this need to not just be good uh, technically, um, but also be very good in terms of understanding what the business needs. And this is why you'll generally see a like principal data engineer, maybe a thing, take more of this role or a staff or someone that's a little higher up because they're generally good at also understanding the business. They're also likely very familiar with different technologies, at least again at a high level so that they know, hey, if we use SQL Server or if we use this or if we use that, what the trade-offs are so that when they're picking these different components, they know why they're picking it. They know why you shouldn't pick it. So that's kind of their role. Their role is really just planning things out. And, and then also while the thing is being developed, you know, making edits or making changes based on, you know, different nuances that come up Maybe the data engineer see something and like, hey, this won't work for whatever reason. Um, and they try to continue to, with that same vision, approach solving this problem. Because what would end up happening if you have essentially, you know, every data engineer solve these little problems in their own way is in the end, the infrastructure would look like, and I've seen this, like 10 people built it, right? Like there was no single design that developed a system, which is difficult to maintain. But when you have an architect and one vision and one set of rules and one set of like architecture and principles that you're following, whether it's data vault, data warehouse, you know, whether you're using camel case or snake, whatever you're doing, it will all feel like it's the same project. And that's important. And so that to me is the data architect's role, right? Like that's the skills they have in data modeling, good at taking business requirements, translating them, good at understanding the big picture of technologies, 
what each of those technologies do, their pros and cons. And then from there, they take those skills and they're the ones that actually are making the designs. They're defining how the data will be stored, where it's gonna be consumed, how it, you know, all of these things that are very high level. Now, when you compare that to a data engineer, and if you watch this channel, you should know kind of the skills of a data engineer, you'll see there's some crossover. And that's because at some companies, again, like I referenced, sometimes these skills are forced together. You've got a very senior data engineer who needs to know data modeling and so on and so forth. But in its purest form, if you look at data engineers, it's more of a craftsman approach. It's more of a discipline and it's less of like this creative approach. It's more of following a very disciplined approach to doing things and actually doing the work, building pipelines. And this is why I think some people don't always find data engineering fun is because it can be sometimes a little repetitive in terms of like building the same um, pipeline over and over again to a degree, even when you use um, out of the box solutions. And it's kind of the same with some software roles, depending on the role. You know, you can just keep building crowd applications, but it's all dependent to, again, companies work for. With that, that means that your skills are going to be things like SQL, Python. Uh, you're likely good at working with Kafka or Spark. Uh, maybe you're using Snowflake, maybe you're using Databricks, but you're good at actually doing the thing. You know, the person before you planned how to do the thing, that's the data to architect's role. You, the data engineer, are now doing the thing. Again, the same way you might have an engineer or an architect kind of plan out the design of a building uh, and then you have carpenters and, and craftsmen actually build said building and these are just two different roles I, neither one is necessarily better um, they're just very different in theory they're just very different in theory when you're actually applying them again at this point the data engineer's role is to actually develop the pipelines develop the tables that the data architect has said should be developed now in the process of developing said tables and pipelines that data engineer will come up with issues, right? Like, oh, we can't pull out this data. This data has duplicates. There's all of these nuances that data engineers need to deal with. And in some cases, they will be responsible for dealing with it on their own. But in some cases, there are issues that are so large, they will impact the design and architecture of what you're building, right? Like it's gonna completely change everything. That table that you thought you could build very easily, not easy to build. And that's when you go back, you bring in the architect again, and you revamp and rechange what you planned out. I think another way you can look at this is also kind of how, when you're doing this project, each role acts. So let's kind of talk through that. If we go through a project, let's just go through an example. And we're talking about first step is planning, requirements, design. Um, the data architect will likely be the one that again is going to the business, asking what they need, trying to understand requirements. And they'll be the ones again, defining based off of all that how things should be stored, what solutions will be best based on cost, based on, you know, amount of data coming in, all of these things. The data architect will then go to the data engineers and they'll work together to talk about the feasibility, right? I don't think the data architect should do it in their own little bubble and come to the data engineers and tell them, do this. You know, they should go with the data engineers and like any other profession, the people doing the work generally know, you know, nuance level. They're going to know when it's like, mm, what you're what you're telling me to do, I get what you're saying, you know, in theory that works, it works great in, in whatever. But if you've ever seen like some people talk about designs or if you've ever seen like car mechanics complain about certain ways that um, engineers have designed cars, you always see that they're like, this makes no sense because I can't, you know, maintain it or I can't fix this thing because without taking all these other pieces out. And so generally, sometimes the architect might design something that works, but might be feasibly hard to either uh, implement or maintain. And that's where a data engineer might come in and be like, okay, big picture makes sense. Nuanced. We need to, you know, change this around for X, Y, Z reason. Now in the implementation phase, this is where the data engineer really starts, you know, shining. They're the ones doing the work. They're the one implementing the actual pipeline, right? Like they're building the pipelines, building the tables. And so they're kind of taking a lead in that regard. And then they're kind of talking with the architect to make sure that they understand what's going on. Uh, the architect's likely reviewing the implementation, seeing how things are working, seeing if, you know, maybe speed tests or whatever they're doing, like how fast our query's running. Does everything make sense? Do we have any bottlenecks that we need to fix right now? Um, if you, especially if you're doing a migration, you're often comparing how uh, one pipeline maybe ran compared to the old, uh, new one. And so that's something the architects likely pay attention to to call out where things need to get fixed. And then once it's implemented, you've kind of got this maintenance phase, right? Like, okay, we've implemented the thing, we've worked together, we've fixed all the problems, all the weird bugs. We've worked together to make sure it's one architecture, one design. From here on out, you know, the data engineer will generally provide maybe some operations maintenance. There's not generally always a data ops team. So more than likely it's the data engineer who's making sure the pipelines are running. If data changes, they're the ones making those like alter statements to add in a new column, but they're still collaborating with the data architect who might be providing advice in terms of how to improve certain pipelines. Again, you might find out that, hey, this one pipeline is getting fat, like slower and slower and slower. 
you know, we've tried to fix it. Um, we're going to need to do an architecture change, right? Because it's no longer managing uh, what it was uh, working with before. And so that's generally where they'll come in. And so as you can see, they, they technically work together, these two, two roles. And sometimes it's very easy for these roles to kind of morph. Um, and in some companies, they do. Some companies, they prefer having one role. It's kind of like I've referenced occasionally like data engineers needing to know data governance. And someone once responded like, oh, what are they going to do? Throw Python and SQL at it. And it's not that data engineers, you know, need to do data governance. It's that sometimes some companies kind of expect them to, or at least some level, maybe not the same level as a pure professional, but sometimes there's this expectation that you think about it. And the same thing with data architecture and data modeling. Sometimes companies don't hire data architects and that's just you and you need to do the data architecture work. So that's kind of the difference between data architects and data engineers. Again, they're oddly sometimes conflated and together in one role or maybe more of a senior data engineer role, but sometimes they're separate. Hopefully that's helpful for everyone watching. Um, if anyone has any questions about data architects versus data engineers, feel free to ask me. I'd love to answer more of your questions. Thanks so much, everyone, and I'll see you. Goodbye.